Hey, what is up, guys, and welcome back. So today we have a new goggle on our hands, and it's the Skyzone O2. Don't mistake this for the O3. This is the previous model that has been refreshed into two flavors and a bunch of different colors. We have the X version. We also have the C version. The X comes with a camera in the front, which with a single button, you can go ahead and look through the camera and it's really great quality by the way we also have the C which does not include the camera now let's put that out of the way and let's start comparing and I'm gonna try to compare these to the best of my abilities in order to help you make your decision here we have the top of the line goggle which is the fat shark HDL it is my daily driver and there's a thing where this actually excels slightly a bit more than the fat shark which is head tracking. So I will actually be using this in head tracking. I have been using this goggle now for five days without the Fat Shark HDOs, just this in my bag, comparing it to the IMWay V2s. Now you might be like, why the hell didn't you compare them to the IMWay V1s? Because they're in the same price category. Well, the IMWay V1 is not reliable period. I mean, at least for me, I had a lot of issues with that thing. Now, the aspect ratio of the new Sky Zone is a 16 by 9. The screen size is 854 by 400 pixels. So it is 16 by 9. And it can be changed to 4 by 3. However, I recommend just sticking on 4, 16 by 9 because that will crop most of the picture. You just have a black screen on the sides. What's really nice is this one takes 7 to 24 volts direct voltage input, which is really cool. And they also provide you with the wire to do that, which is a pretty long XT60 that'll just go right in and get you going. It also has a 48 channel receiver and it has a really nice uh, OSD inside. And it also has head tracking built in, which is huge. I really like that. You can install it on almost every other goggle here, but it'll be quite expensive on Iomwe. It'll probably even be more expensive on a Fat Shark. This is all built in and can be controlled through the OSD, which is something really nice to have. Now, the fit placement on my face, this is much more comfortable than the Iomwe V1s and the V2s, but this is a personal preference and this comes back to your face structure. But if a Fat Shark fits perfect on you, um, and the Iomways didn't, then you'll probably have the same. This will be right in the middle. The fitting is very important because depending on your nose, believe it or not, it'll dictate how the goggle is going to sit on your face. Now, this one is a 30 degree field of view and the Iomway V1s, it's in the same price category, is a 32 degree field of view. However, for me at least, with the nose being pushed, pushing the goggle away from me, I do get less field of view. Now, the only difference between the screens in terms of specs, I'll get into the image quality in a bit. So the Sky Zone has 80 pixels less in height. So the screens are just 80 pixels smaller than the IOMA V1s. However, this makes up for it in the image quality. The image quality is absolutely superb. I've never used these Sky Zone O2s previously. I'm really glad they refreshed it and I got my hands on one of them. The screen quality is much better than the IOMA v2s as well the iomi v1 this for me personally this beats the iomi v1s out of the park times a trillion i really want to compare the iomi v2s to be honest to this because these are the two that i've been wearing back to back now there's about a hundred dollar difference between these two and let's talk about some of the differences here now image quality goes to the sky zone 100 and i'm pretty sure a lot of other people would agree with me on that um then we have the field of view the field of view for the sky zone is 30 degrees for the Iomwe V2s, remember this one's $100 more expensive, it's 45 degree field of view. So there's a 15 degree field of view, give or take if it's bullshit numbers, but it is bigger. It is, this one is using a larger screen. It's using 800 by 600 pixel screen. So we have 800 by 600, which makes it a four by three, and this is a 16 by nine. So in terms of the width, it's the same exact size, but now we're just talking about the height, which um, the reason why this has more field of view is because it just has a larger screen in terms of height for the IOMI V2s. Now, the IOMI V2s has 64 channel receiver. This one has a 48 channel receiver. They both have race band, L band, A, B. Uh, this doesn't have C band. I don't think it's a really big issue. I don't think anybody uses C band, but yeah, if you do, do use C band, then you're not going to have C band on this. Now, let's talk about some of the peripherals and the external components that are used and some of the features here. They both have a head tracker output. However, this Sky Zone has a built in head tracker. For the IOMI V2s, you're going to have to buy a separate head tracker, which gets installed here. And it is somewhat expensive and i really hate what these wires that i only use they are absolutely unreliably um they're just unreliable and not very durable and you would connect it here with these really crappy wires i really truly hate these wires on my own way because i've had very bad experiences on my own way v1s do they have DVR? Yes, both have DVR. Do they have fans? Yes, they both have fans. They both are diversity. Uh, they both have HDMI outputs. They both have, oh, sorry. They both have HDMI inputs. 
uh, they both have AV out, AV in, and audio out. And they also have IPD adjustments. And we also have a USB uh, port just on the Sky Zone for future updates. The menu here is really nice. However, you still don't get an OSD overlay while you're flying. So in terms of bang for your buck, now if you're looking for a bigger screen with lesser quality, it's not terrible quality, but you would go for the IOM way. Now, if you're looking for a really nice screen with a lot of features such as the head tracking, which can be very important, it doesn't have to be an FPV pilot. The head tracking can be very important for other people as well. There's other projects we can do, RC cars. I have a lot of AI projects up on the way with the Latte Panda and some collaborations with some companies which are gonna be pretty interesting. And this is the one that I'm gonna be using. So for me, this one actually came just in the right time. So you'll be seeing this quite a lot on the channel and it is a pleasure to use in my opinion. I always, I never really liked, even when I'm flying in the field, I, I just never liked them. Maybe, maybe I'm biased. Maybe I am biased because I had a really shitty experience with the V1s. But um, in terms of overall quality, I give it to Skyzone. Customer service and support, I also do give it to Skyzone here. And um, I think I really like what they've done here. I mean, I think they've kept it the same price as well. And they've just done these little nice modifications here and there. And they provide you with a lot of things compared to Ionway with this with the Skyzone. First of all, they give you a two dipolar antenna, which you won't be using anyways. They also give us this cable, which is for head tracking. You connect this side to, for example, your FR Sky transmitter, and this would go into that right there. And here we have just another format for another type of uh, transmitter, which is really nice that they give you two of those. And here they also give us an RCA to a uh, 3.5 millimeter, I believe. And they also give you the XT60 to this, which you can put up, I believe, up to 6S. Well, it's up to 26 volts, so make sure you calculate that. So you could possibly stick in a 5S and be okay. I, I wouldn't recommend. You could put more, but I personally won't put more than a 4S in there. And it's really nice that it, it can take that range of voltage anywhere between uh, 7 to 24 volts. So... 2S up to 5S, you're going to be fine, even some sort of a 6S. So overall, I really like the face fitment, the image quality, the features it provides, and I'll be using it for the next two weeks on the channel, uh, behind the scenes, and create update videos, anything I notice. One of the most annoying things about this, to be honest, is the buttons. They're just, they're just so many, and it's a little bit difficult to figure out what does what uh, in the beginning. But then later on, obviously, once you purchase it and then you have it for a couple days, then you'll immediately memorize everything. However, when you're a reviewer and you're constantly going from product to product, sometimes it could take time to get used to a product. However, now I'm going to be using it for the next flight, so uh, I'm purposely not bringing my Fat Shark in order to force myself to use this and to see everything else that's going to come along the way. There is no light leakage, and they also do provide you with the carrying case. Maybe so that might be some important for some people. It's a really nice carrying case. All goggles now just provide you an extra foam strap here. Um, if this was in your budget range, it's a really great goggle. Uh, you will be flying pretty happy. I, I can guarantee you that. Um, if you're going to be transitioning from a box goggle, it, it's going to make a night and day difference for you. Night and day difference. Overall, if you like 16 by 9, I think this is the bad boy for you. And well, that's it guys. I'm going to leave a link to everything down below. Go ahead and check them out. And I have the IOMWI V1S upcoming on the way very soon. Hopefully once I receive it, then we could put a head-to-head -head comparison, possibly even a teardown to take a look at the internals. But to be honest, I really do not want to tear this one down. I want to, I, I actually, I really like it, to be honest. Um, that's just me. And well, that's it, guys. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.